Charles Barkley picked the Kings to go to the conference finals before Game 7. Malik Monk called the Warriors old. Dub Nation's most prominent fans on Twitter were calling his performance in this series mid and claiming the season was over. Talk show hosts were labeling his impact early in this series as not being a factor. Stay tuned to see how Curry wouldn't merely prove those doubters wrong, but make them look silly in Game 7 to both certifiably cement his legend status at his position and fuel the dubs into the second round. Before that, just 15.2% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe, also splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter for a follow back. An all-time masterclass in a closeout Game 7 from Wardell Stephen Curry II saw the chef carry Dub Nation over the finish line with a 50 bomb. Undisputedly the greatest point guard the game of basketball has ever seen, with all due respect to Magic Johnson, took the script and ran with it, proving every warrior doubter dead wrong, and as per usual, stood up to the task of utterly realizing and showing up to the moment. It was the 56th career playoff game for Steph where he scored at least 30 points, the 8th postseason game where he scored at least 40, and get this, Curry on Sunday became the only player of all time to score 50 points in a Game 7. Most insane part of this beasting from Chef, aside from his on-court wizardry, was that it came directly after Dub Nation, along with about the entirety of the basketball world, preparing for the end. Because surely there was no way with their 11-30 road record during the regular season the Warriors could win two of the last three games of a series on the road, right? Many didn't think it was possible. This old picture of the calm, cool, and collected Warrior Big Three would go viral, with fans claiming it was their last game together. The doubt in general from the fan base was pretty astounding, with not only takes claiming the dynasty was in shambles from Dub Nation's top Twitter contributors, but three different videos surfacing of Draymond Green, Stephen Curry, and an assistant coach tearing into Jordan Poole. The narrative seemed to be set. The dubs were done. On top of that, this was Charles Barkley. The Sacramento Kings are going to the conference finals. Here was Malik Monk after winning game six. They was a little tired. Um, we, we were a little younger than they are. The Kings would also take a celebratory game six picture where they held up fours, potentially an attempt to mock Clay Thompson who flexes that hand sign to tell everyone how many rings that he has. Speaking of Clay, he tried to warn us all prior to Game 7 about the Warriors' approach, saying quote-unquote, we will respond like the champs we are on Sunday. But going back to one of those takes from Dub Nation, heavily doubting the Warriors' chances at advancing after the Kings had stolen back home court. One take read, all Steph needed was a teammate who could drop 30-plus, and the Warriors wouldn't be in a Game 7. While Clay took note himself of the fact that his plus-minus was a plus 30, pretty damn good, Thompson, who's counted on to be a second at the very least a third option, also admitted that he shot just 4 for 19 from the field. Therefore, Steph didn't need any other efficient, high-volume score to get it done in a hostile environment on the road. The second half of the Splash Brothers would also say post-game, this is a Game 7 I will always remember as the Stephen Curry game. And Clay was spot on with that take. By dropping exactly 50 on 63% true shooting, which included 7 three-pointers, Steph would put the Kings to bed, even proving a take from your boy D-Flo wrong made for my last video about this series, where I said the Kings would at the very, very least keep Game 7 close. Admittedly, I was very wrong about that, as the moment just got a bit too big for Sacramento. As Jared Allen would say, the lights were brighter than expected. No, get those lights off! Off! While Steph was flying through defenders, shifting gears at 200 miles per hour like George Russell, stepping into seemingly impossible jumpers with poise and ultimately pristine execution, conversely, the Kings were committing costly fouls, which put the dubs at the charity stripe, committing brutal turnovers, and missing wide-open looks. That right there isn't going to end a dynasty. The trash talk also didn't help the Kings, as while Dub Nation's rightful doubt was the motivation they were looking to ensue, 
Monk insinuating the dubs were old, as pointed out by Draymond Green, evidently motivated the Warriors. Just take it from Steph's post-game interview after winning Game 7, where he spoke on that take from Monk. The competitive spirit is always in us, and we didn't need any sound bites to motivate us, but it did help. Let's get into how Steph got it done, though. After a flare pop action with Wiggs setting it and Looney clearing out to open up the weak side, Steph gets Davis on his back, up fakes and jabs after allowing TD to get back in front of him, before utilizing a second triple threat move, driving into this jab, splitting the help of Barnes while embracing contact, which knocks him off balance, but he has the awareness to toss up a ridiculous mid-air runner for the and one. Wildest sequence of the night came after Herter gets him to hesitate and chuck up a miss from the corner, as Wiggs attempts what would have been the putback dunk of the year but also misses, then Steph's underrated vertical outsprings Herter for the board, Steph lands and contorts his body into a drive in one motion, and finds room to drive in for another contested floater, this time over Domas. On rookie difficulty, Steph's gonna isolate Trey Lyles, utilize a triple crossover move, the second and third of which both lead into consecutive step backs, getting Lyles jumping on the perimeter, but that third cross ends up leading into an elusive momentum cross, an instinctively polished combo that gets him the open lane, and a Euro steps around the late help of De'Aaron Fox. Bell Hop tries to give me a Euro step, which is technically traveling. I break his ankle. Lateral quickness. And finishes on the left side with his right hand. Kings are slow to get back, so Steph's simply gonna put his head down while crossing half, exploding to his offhand, selling the drive with that elusive entry, then stop on a dime in the literal sense to send Monk flying for a wide open, easy elbow jumper. 21 dribble playset sees Clay clear out to the weak side, and it turns into a strong side zooms action between Dre and Steph, and Steph's speed and off ball motion gain him leverage going into his drive downhill that the Kings can't recover back to. An after timeout set sees Wiggs bring it up, hand it off to Clay and set the on ball. Clay swing it to Dre, who pitches it to Steph. Curry sweep through to his right, proceed in for another Euro step, but this time after that, hang in the air to avoid Foxy's charge attempt for the hoop. As Dre comes up to set the screen, Curry's gonna fake another sweep through to his right, but as Dre forces the switch to get Lyles onto him again, Chef instead attacks to his left, uses a moving jab step before stepping back once, and watch the footwork into his patented double step back to shuffle all in one motion with two feet yet again, which is technically traveling, and the shot in Trey's face that could have been a four point play, I can't explain to you. I also can't explain how after running into Wiggins out of another flare pop set and getting clamped by the much bigger Murray, Steph finds a way to skirt around him by quickly changing direction, or how he has the impulsiveness to stop short around the foul line for the deep 13-foot floater. When your back's against the wall and every odd seems to be stacked against you, boy oh boy does it help to have the mechanical fortitude of Wardell Stephen Curry II. Doubting Steph isn't the way to go if you're the opponent. Really? Say, congratulations, you played yourself. As Curry says himself, this man sees everything. For example, hello Wardell. I'm going to post another video finishing off the coverage for this all-time great Kings dub series tomorrow, so stay tuned for that by subscribing.